All right, so this is my 2012 Sir Custom Modern, and it was the first custom-made guitar that Sir put together for me. Uh, I've used it over the past eight years mainly as my touring and live guitar, uh, but I've also used it on a stack of recordings and my own music. The concept behind it was when I was growing up, I was a Les Paul kid, so I had many Les Pauls and lots of my heroes played them. And my ear got really used to that kind of honky, upper mid-range barky thing that uh, a mahogany guitar will do. So that inspired this a lot. So in that sense, it has a really weighty mahogany body, 316 maple cap, and mahogany neck, which uh, you can see looks beautiful. And the profile is kind of the medium to the larger end of things. So it fits comfortably in the hand, but plays effortlessly and feels great. Spec-wise, uh, I've had many pickups in this guitar over the years, and um, I've settled now on the SSH Plus and SSV. Um, I can't really see or hear an improvement on this particular set. Uh, the perfect for what I do anyway. The SSH Plus is very lively and harmonic and forgiving um, and aggressive. And the SSV is the total opposite. It's quite woody and earthy sounding. Uh, it has a very vintage kind of delivery, which is, which is great. They sound really different to each other, which is something I always look for in pickups. Um, it always bothered me when you would change pickups and the neck pickup just sounded like a worse version of the bridge pickup, which is not the case here. These are, it's complement each other beautifully. So I get asked about the layout of this guitar quite a bit, and as you can see, it's quite minimal and stripped back. And I conceived all of that just so uh, on stage it would be very simple to control all aspects of the guitar um, with my right hand. So we have a simple three-way blade, a single volume knob, and a push-push, which makes it very easy to split the guitar by just coming down onto the volume knob once. Uh, I don't have a tone pot, as you can see, and that's really just because I've never used tone pots for anything. I, I, on any guitar that there ever was one, I only saw it there to make sure that it was on, and uh, you know, I always found it bizarre that there was a knob on your guitar that you could make it sound worse if you wanted to. <laughs> so I never saw the point of them, and uh, on my designs, I just do away with it. The guitar has been back to the Sir factory many times. Um, it went back again in 2014, 2015. Uh, I brought it back this year again in 2020, and it's had quite a few modifications and tweaks done to it over the years as I've taken notes about what I would want to change about it the more I've used it. Um, it's had some aesthetic differences done to it and some electronics uh, work done to it. But one of the main things that was done uh, way back in 2014 that I really love about this guitar is that it has quite a low profile uh, whammy bar and that came about when I was sound checking um, for that 2014 factory party and when we were doing those events all of the artists got assigned to their own guitar tech to help them with whatever they needed and I thought that was really cool because I'd never had a guitar tech before and a gentleman named Mike Palmer was looking after me and he came up to me and said, Hey James, is there anything that you would like different about this guitar? Anything at all, just let me know. And so at that very moment I was holding onto the whammy bar and I said to him, is there any way you can make this just sit exactly in the profile of my uh, index and second finger while I'm playing so it's at the right height for me? He said, of course, grabbed a measure and you know, took some picks and then walked away with the bar, came back 10 minutes later, and it was absolutely perfect. And um, that's been one of my favorite things, spec-wise, about this guitar, that every time I pick up that whammy bar, it's just right in the right spot for me and feels really, really good. Um, when the pot is out, it will just pass over the top, <laughs> leaving about one millimeter of clearance. So it's pretty low. Um, but I've had plenty of guitar players play this guitar and feel that and agree that it just feels absolutely beautiful the way it's so low in profile and flush to the body. 
Another interesting thing about this guitar is that when people see it, they think that it's brand new. And it certainly isn't brand new if you get up close to it. You can see that there's all kinds of unfortunate dings in the neck and big chips out of the body. But on the whole, I think for eight years of use, um, and it's only ever been uh, put in gig bags and checked under planes, it really has held up amazingly. And I put that down to the lacquer that Sarah finished in the moderns with. Uh, it's so hard and so resilient that, as you can see, it still looks absolutely great after eight years of solid use in the studio and on tour. I've used this guitar on every solo record that I've ever made, from Aphasia, Madison Convention, The Usurper, Danilavis, and I use it a fair bit on the new record as well. Um, and it's just great. It performs beautifully in split mode and it, it has a very convincing vintage sound. Um, and obviously the humbucking is really raw and aggressive and powerful. And so it's made it really just kind of my Swiss army knife guitar for any situation. Um, and it's amazing. I absolutely love this guitar and, and I expect I'll be using it for many more years to come.